Hi, in today's video, let's take a look at a power bank and battery charger sent in from XSTAR. The model number is PB2SL V2. Now, I should mention that this is an improved version over the original PB2SL. From what I can see on XSTAR's website, the V2 version essentially fixed some of the issues with the original V1 design. Of course, the V2 now supports more charging and discharging protocols, and it also has slightly increased maximum output power. It now supports up to 22.5 watts compared to the 18 watts with the V1. Anyway, the XR power bank is very well made. Let me actually show you some of the differences between this XR power bank and some of the more generic brands you can find on the market today. I happen to have one such generically branded power bank that looks almost identical to the XR, and here it is. I bought this one a while back as I wanted to use it with the cells I already have as a power bank. Having a power bank with changeable batteries is actually quite convenient, as you can swap in a set of fresh cells if you need more juice. From a casual glance, you can see that these two battery banks, they look pretty much identical, but look is only skin deep. After you use them for a while, the first thing you'll notice is that the battery cover on this generic one doesn't quite stick to the case as well, as let me show you here. If I try to lift it, you can see here, now I can lift it, but if I wiggle it, it comes right off. Now, this cover is actually attached via these magnets, and that's the only mechanism holding the case in place. Now let's take a look at the XTAR. You can see that the cover is actually attached very firmly. I can shake it like this, it does not come off at all. So in fact, I have to pry it open, and you can see that I even have two heavier batteries inside, and these are attached by the similar mechanism here. So the battery cover here is attached very firmly. This, by the way, is actually quite important, as you don't want a battery cover to come off when you toss the battery bank in your bag. With this generic one, unfortunately, this happened to me multiple times, which is quite annoying. Now, the second thing I wanted to point out also has something to do with the case cover here. These power banks are supposed to work with both 18650 cells and 21700 cells. In this generic one, I currently have a pair of protected 18650s installed. Let me just show you here. You can see that these are the cells. The issue is that you can see here, there is quite a bit of space between the cells, and that's because the case can also accommodate 21700s, as I mentioned earlier. Anyway, if you're using 18650s, like what I'm doing here, obviously the batteries are going to shift around in the case if you shake it, and obviously that's not going to work. So let me just show you here. So now I close it. If I shake it, you can see that the batteries now come loose, and they're no longer in contact with the case. So it's not going to work, unfortunately, in this case. So how the manufacturer solved the problem was by offering these rubber rings you can put over the batteries. Now, I suppose it does help the situation a little bit. As you can see here, let me just take one of this out. And if you put this in, it doesn't wiggle anymore, but it is just not that elegant. And in practice, it actually doesn't work that well. If you shake the battery case, sometimes it still comes out. So that's not ideal at all. Now let's take a look at how XTAR solved this problem. And by the way, I currently have these 21700s in at the moment. Let me actually take them out first. Oh, by the way, there's another problem with the generic one I forgot to mention. Although it takes 21700s, but it doesn't work with these protected cells, as they're just ever so slightly too long. You can see that it does not fit at all. Now, to be fair, it did mention in the back here that it only takes, you can see here, protected 18650 lithium ion batteries, but not these batteries. These batteries are unprotected only. Of course, when I bought it, I didn't quite read it carefully, so that's why it didn't work. But anyway, just wanted to point out. So that isn't really the fault of the manufacturer, I just didn't read it carefully. But nevertheless, it does not accept these protected 21700s in this generic branded one. Anyway, XR uses this adapter for the 18650s. You can see that I can place this in. And now I should be able to Put the battery in. Let me show you that. And you can also see that on the battery case, we have this bar here, and you can rotate it by 90 degrees. And what that does is actually it will press onto the battery, make it very secure. So now if you shake it, you can see that it does not come loose at all. So this is a very good design, in my opinion, compared to the generic ones. Now let me put the 21700s back in. You can see that I can remove this adapter here, and now it will accommodate these 21700s. 
Of course, for 21700s, you need to make sure that the bar here is vertical. All right, with the comparisons out of the way, let's actually verify some of the specs. First, let's actually take a look at the USB-A output. And to verify the spec, I'm using my MOS2 electronic load, as you can see in the background here. So the first thing I wanted to verify is the USB-A output, which is this port here. And you can see here from the spec, it mentioned that the maximum output here on the USB-A is 5 volts, 3 amps. So let's take a look to see whether or not that is accurate. And for that, I'm just using this crude adapter here. By the way, let me show you here. And I'm going to hook up the electronic load. And let's actually concentrate on the readings here. So right now, I'm drawing 1 amp, by the way. So you can see on the setting here. Now, it is hard to see, but right now, we are drawing 1 amp, as you can see here. And there's some voltage drop, that's normal because we have this relatively long wire here. Anyway, so now let me increase the current and let's see at what point the electronic load cuts off. So right now I'm increasing 100 milliamps at a time. So let's do 2 amps. And no problem, right now we're drawing 2 amps, it's showing 2.1, but that's close enough. And you can see that we have no problem. Of course, let's go straight to 3 amps, which is the maximum here. And now we're at the maximum. And you can see that it's holding up. I will let it run for a few minutes and see if we have any issues. And I have let it run for a couple of minutes. So far, so good. No problem. And if I touch it, everything's still pretty cool. So let me keep increasing the current draw here. Let's do 3.1, and don't know if you saw that, at 3.5 amps, it actually cut off. So let's go back down. Does it recover automatically? No, it doesn't. Okay, so let me remove the load, and we will reconnect the load here. So now I went back to 2.7 amps, and let's go increasing again. Let's do 3.4 this time, and see if we can hold that current here. So now you can see that we are drawing 3.4 amps. Of course, it's showing 3.5, but that's because of the offset here. As you can see, we are showing 3.4 on the electronic load here. So it seems that we have no problem with 3.4 amps. And let me increase it to 3.5 amps, see if it cuts off again. Yep, you can see that. So there's definitely quite some margin built in. Now let me actually change to use the USB-C output as I have a power PD decoy here I can use to adjust the output voltage. So that will be more convenient and I can test all the supported voltages here. So let me remove this. And let's put in a USB-C cable. And connect the power decoy. So let me change the current down to 1 amp. At the moment, we're showing 1 amp at 5 volts, and let's increase the current again. Let's do 3 amps, as that's the maximum specified current for 5 volts. And you can see that we have no problem. Of course, we can turn it higher. Let's do 3.4. Actually, cut off at 3.4. Let's actually turn it down a little bit to 3 amps, and I will reconnect the load. So that's 3 amps. Let's actually see the actual cutoff current here, because now we're using the USB-C port. And I'm going to increase it 3.1, no problem. 
The display discrepancy is a little bit higher here, as right now we're only drawing 3.2 amps, but it's showing 3.4. Nevertheless, let's keep increasing 3.3. I wondered if the actual cutoff is actually measured by this as 3.5 amp. As you can see here, right now it's 3.3, 3.4. Yeah, it cuts off. So basically, it's still at 3.5 amps. It's just a measurement here is a little bit off here. I had just changed the decoy, so right now we're outputting 9 volts. You can see here, we're drawing 1 amp at the moment. Let me increase the current here. So let's increase it directly to 2 amps, as that's the maximum we're supposed to be able to get. And you can see that we're currently outputting 9.2 volts at 2 amps. Let's increase a little bit more. 2.1, no problem. 2.2, 2 2 2.3, 2.4, 2.5. You can see at 2.5 amps, the output dropped to 8.2 volts. It's no longer 9 volts. And let's keep increasing here, 2.6. Yeah, it dropped further to 6.4. So definitely we have quite a bit of margin. So let's go back to 2 amps. And you can see that we are able to sustain the 2 amps output with no problem at 9 volts. All right, I adjusted the decoy. So now we're outputting 12 volts. So let's take a look at this back here. For 12 volts, we should be able to output 1.5 amps. So let's take a look here. And right now we're setting it back to 1 amp. Let's do 1.1, 1.2, 1.3, 1.4, 1.5, 1.6, 1.7, 1.8, 1.9, 1.10, 1.11, 1.12, 1.13, 1.14, 1.15, 1.16, 1.17, 1.18, 1.19, 1.20